our viewer question today um, is about iodine. And they have asked, are dried sea veggies like dulse a reliable source of iodine or does it evaporate as the dulse is dried? What a fascinating question. And it's, it's a very chemically astute one. I congratulate the question asker on this one. Why? Okay, so uh, we'll get to sea vegetables like dulse. I, I just had some of my salad last night. And uh, two nights ago, I'm doing a, doing a juice cleanse now, but two nights ago, uh, we had our last supper with the salad, we had some dulce in there. And I, I love dulce. It's got that lovely salty flavor, uh, and, and it's a good source of iodine, uh, which our body needs. And since you, if you're a whole plant food vegan person, uh, you're not eating fish. And so uh, that's the main source of iodine for omnivore folks. But if you're not eating that, where are you getting your iodine for your thyroid gland? It's really important. And these sea vegetables are a lovely source of it. And I'm a strong advocate of, uh, of a couple times a week throwing a, uh, a little gob of dulce or wakame or arame into your, onto your salad or into your vegetable soup. And uh, assuming you feel comfortable about it as far as uh, possible contaminants. We'll talk about that in a minute. But behind your question with the iodine, uh, uh, these plants come from the ocean, they, they contain iodine. But what's behind her question has to do with sea salt. Uh, and uh, sea salt these days is a very popular item and there's all sorts of extravagant claims made for it and there's wonderful mineral content and it comes from the Himalayas and from the, uh, uh, the, the ancient uh, salt quarries of Tibet uh, and uh, that's, uh, that, that's another issue. But regarding the iodine in sea salt, um, the answer is there isn't any. And people say, wait a minute, it's made from seawater, how can it not be iodine? Um, the reason why is starts, uh, you can get a feel for it if you remember the last time you were at your municipal swimming pool and you were swimming, uh, what was, uh, what, what did you smell <laughs> as you brought, had your nose just above the, the surface of the water? You smell the chlorine coming off the water because chlorine is volatile, it means it evaporates and, uh, and we all know the chlorine evaporates. Well, if you... Go back to your high school chemistry on the periodic table there in that column of halogens. Uh, uh, there's fluorine and, uh, and chlorine and down you see iodine. And iodine is a, is a halogen as well. And iodine evaporates as well. Well, how do you make seawater? How do you make sea salt? You take big trays of seawater, put it out in the hot sun, and let the, let the water evaporate in, in the hot sun's rays. Well, guess what else evaporates as the, uh, as the sea as the sea water is evaporated? The iodine evaporates off. And so uh, pure sea salt, uh, when they first scrape it out of those trays, uh, the iodine content is pretty much nil. Uh, and uh, uh, commercial sea salt often is iodized. If you do a certain iodized sea salt, you'll see there is such a thing. They put that iodine back in as they are processing the salt. Uh, so that is what is making our question ask or ask, well, does the same thing happen to dulls when they're drying the dulls? Does the, does the iodine evaporate off the dulls? And uh, my answer to that would be no, probably not. Why? Because they don't, as far as I know, I'm not a dulceologist here, but uh, as far as actually making the dull, I don't think they put it out in the hot sun for, for days. Um, this, I imagine it's done in, on drying racks in, in a drying room where there's hot air uh, blown through the, uh, uh, through the drying seed vegetables. Uh, and it nowhere gets hot enough to evaporate iodine off. And the iodine is, is fully uh, chemically bound to the fiber of the dulse plant. And, uh, and uh, to get that uh, mixture hot enough for the iodine to leave, you, 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 you uh, oxidize, you'd, you'd crumble the, uh, the dulse, uh, return it to ashes. Uh, so, uh, make a long story short, no, uh, the iodine in dulse uh, should uh, pretty much be intact, maybe a little bit of it, but no, the iodine uh, in dried sea vegetables should, should be absolutely stable uh, and so, so not a problem. Now, 
people say, I don't use iodine uh, ever since Fukushima, uh, the nuclear explosion, all the seaweed's all full of radioactivity. Um, and it's turned out not uh, an unfounded concern. And apparently, especially in the Pacific uh, Ocean, uh, especially on the, on the Japan side, um, there, are, there are significant amount of radioactivity showing up in fish and sea vegetables, etc. That's a bit worrisome. Um, the dulse and sea vegetables uh, that uh, seem to be uh, widely available and would, would ex be expected to be relatively safer, of course, are those that come from the Atlantic side. Uh, I have no connection with the company, but apparently Maine Coast Sea Vegetable, Maine, M-A-I-N-E, uh, so the state of Maine, I mean, coast sea vegetables and the, the folks along that side apparently have negligible amounts of uh, radioactivity in their, uh, in their products there. So uh, uh, I would suggest that uh, you look for uh, sea vegetables that were grown in the Atlantic side of the, uh, of the, uh, the world's oceans here and the odds of it uh, having any significant contaminants are fairly low. But again, we're treating our oceans like sewers and, uh, and certainly sea vegetables can pick up, uh, uh, you don't want to uh, eat anything out of the Yokohama shipping channel or the, or the uh, Welland Canal uh, in New York there. Uh, but most of them are, are harvested in areas where there's lots of uh, good water flow. And so uh, if it comes to the Atlantic side, you're probably pretty safe in enjoying those sea vegetables. And again, once or twice a week, a little bit in your, your supercell, the amounts are, are really minimal. I, I think people can enjoy it without, uh, without excessive worry. Good question. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Each day, Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our daily Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.